Our next speaker today is Dr. Jasper Thibault. Uh, Jasper is from the NDSU Carrington yeah. Research Extension Center. Oh, great, thank you. And Jasper is going to talk about uh, the assessment of condensed distiller solubles and wet distiller solubles as sources of phosphorus fertilizer for corn and wheat. Okay, thank you. Uh, this uh, study uh, started in 2015. And uh, we are proceeding with the same study this year uh, for the third year running. Uh, my collaborators are Dr. Joe Ransom, uh, Sylvia, you have my assistant, and uh, Dr. Paolo Flores. Now we understand, I don't know so much, or I don't know much about condensed distillate solubles. I am a soil fertility guy and I'm getting into this thing. And I'll be very appreciative if you have uh, questions after this uh, on this uh, topic. Uh, CDS and uh, where distillers grains are co-products or some call it byproducts of ethanol production uh, with the use of corn. Uh, we have five ethanol plants in the state. Now there's one of them that uses a dry milling process uh, to produce ethanol. As a result, they usually have uh, excess of uh, distillers grains produced because not everything that they produce is used for livestock feed as well as uh, not all of it is used for uh, to meet the demands by producers who have begun asking for distillers grains to use as a fertilizer source. Now by 80 to 90 percent of this distiller of the distillers grain produced uh, is sold out uh, internationally. So there is usually excess uh, that farmers can use to apply on their fields. Uh, the price of distillers grain, given the, depending on the year or the time of the year, actually varies. It is usually much cheaper uh, in fall compared to spring. So why did we get interested in uh, this uh, topic? So like I said, to, to, in 2015, some producers began asking questions as to the beneficial, uh, the benefits they can get from distillers grain as a source of fertilizer. Uh, the high cost of drying for the ethanol plants, high cost of storage and disposal or transportation, uh, then the limited research that has been done on distillers grain as a source of fertilizer in the state, and I think in many parts of, of the US. Uh, after we started this work, I think it was two months ago that I realized that some detailed work is also has been done in, uh, in Canada, mostly in the, in the greenhouse or, lab, in, or in the lab by Dr. Jeff Shono and his team. So we developed two objectives to determine the phosphorus fertilizer value, as well as determine if it makes economic sense uh, to apply the distillers grain as a source of uh, phosphorus fertilizer. So the materials and methods uh, section we have, in 2015, we applied phosphorus at four levels. We had a check, 40, 80, and 120 pounds P205. Uh, in Fairmont, North Dakota, in Carrington, we replicated the same study, applying the triple superphosphate, wet distillers grain, and condensed distillers solvents. Henceforth, I'll call CD CDS. So we applied these three rates. Uh, I have it here dribble. This is, so this is supposed to be broadcast. So everything was uh, applied on the surface. Then in 2016, we, re we repeated the study at Carrington, uh, Grey Corn, as we did in 2015. And in 2016, again, we added uh, the wheat uh, trial. Now we applied 40 and 80 pounds of phosphorus with those three sources, TSP, CDS, and WTG. So this is what it looks like. 
when we got our wage distillers grant, we applied to this office. Uh, that was in 2015. Uh, in 2016, uh, because of the consistency of the weight of this uh, condensed distiller soluble, uh, we had to mix it with water. So we add, added 50, 50 parts water and 50 parts uh, CDS to be able to apply. And we had to use a pump in order to do this. So this is what we had in the field. Uh, that was in 2015. That's how I applied the treatments. So what were, our, what were the other nutrients applied in addition to phosphorus? Now at 40 pounds of P2O5, we applied th almost 360 gallons uh, per acre of the CDS as a serum. With this, we are applying 44 pounds of nitrogen, 33 pounds of K2O, and 12 pounds of sulfur. With the wet distiller spray, at 40 pounds, at the 40 pound rate, we applied 2.1 tons of the VDG. And these are the other nutrients applied 51 pounds of nitrogen, 37 pounds of K2O, and 15 pounds of sulfur. Now, the zinc. Also applied with this, there is uh, calcium as well. So understandably, the different sources of our distillers grain can vary from year to year uh, because of the nutrient management by the producers. So in 2015, looking at the analysis of variants, we did not see any significant response to our distillers are our, our treatment. And the soil test here was 7 ppm. Uh, we had very high yields at that location. Uh, in 2015, again, in Carrington, where, I'm um, sorry, at Ferma, the only uh, significant difference that we saw uh, was with the starch content, even though we did not see a significant response uh, in the yield. There was a significant difference in the starch, which I, I'm not showing here. But the corn yields actually showed that there was some, some effect, but like I said, it wasn't significant, you know. So with uh, the current uh, area, we saw that there was a significant response to phosphorus as well as uh, the phosphorus source, as well as the rate, uh, when we look at the yield. There was also a significant response in the plant height, uh, the leaf phosphorus and the grain phosphorus uh, concentration, as well as the total phosphorus removed. Now the phosphorus level was 9 ppm. So looking at, there was no interaction, as we saw. So this is, the response uh, graph that we got, uh, there was a significant difference between the 120 pounds rate uh, compared to the check. However, there were no differences between the 80 and 40 and the, sorry, this is supposed to be B, the 40, 80 and the, and the check. Now, when we look at the leaf phosphorus, concentration as well as the grain phosphorus concentration. Uh, as we said, we saw significant response, uh, but there were no differences between uh, the 80, the 40, and the check. However, there were differences only between the check and the 120 pounds rate. Now, I, looking at the yield uh, response, uh, looking at the differences between the sources of phosphorus applied, the condensed distillers significantly increase the yield uh, compared to the wet distillers grain and the triple superphosphate. Now, we were not, I'm not sure why the condensed distillers solo groups performed better than the wet distillers grain. Besides, uh, maybe hypothesizing that, it is probable if phosphorus 
and the various nutrients within the condensed cellular soil was more available or became mineralized more so or earlier when the plants needed it than the wet distillers rate. Now looking at the uh, response of the rates applied uh, to fossil oil, uh, the yield response uh, to uh, the phosphorus rates, uh, we can see from here that at 120 pounds, uh, we had significant yield difference uh, compared to uh, the check plot. Then in 2016, when we uh, did the study, we saw a reverse. In 2016, we were seeing a significantly higher yield produced with wet distillers grain compared to CDS. Now, I haven't been able to, I have not understood why the WTG should produce higher yield than CDS in 2016, why in 2015 we had the reverse. Uh, looking at the 2015 and 2016 uh, results, uh, we can see that the CDS, again, I'm just bringing a summary of the two years to one graph. CDS significantly higher than the rest of the treatment. And in 2016, it was the white distillers rate. So maybe uh, I am doing this uh, study in greenhouse as well as uh, our plans to uh, put this in the field again in 2017 to see if we may get some more information uh, from, uh, from these uh, treatments. So here, yeah, this is an application of the sealer screen uh, to the wheat uh, sulfur the wheat, uh, the wheat trial, sorry, the wheat uh, phosphorus trial with the sealer screen. Now this is what we had to deal with. It was, kind of, it was quite messy when we were applying our treatments. And uh, we have a mouse, let me see. Okay, let's see, I think I have. Okay. Okay, I wanted to be able to use, uh, press something. There, it's very this one, right? There. Okay, let's see. Okay, so on the wheat study, we applied three rates. Uh, we had uh, three uh, phosphorus rates, 0, 40, and 80 pounds of P205. And one day before we applied our treatments, I got a call from Mary, who told me that a farmer in the western part of the state was asking who had read the article that we wrote and was asking how this product could be applied in no-till situation because we have been applying and incorporating uh, the distiller spray. So because I'm usually crazy in my ideas on how I approach setting uh, my research I immediately instructed, instructed my assistant that I would like for us to split our plot in half and apply this product on the surface without incorporating and half of the plot we would incorporate. So there she is applying uh, incorporating like we did in 2015. Uh, then this five feet was not incorporated. So here is the distiller screen, uh, the condensed distiller solvo. Uh, let's see, I might be able to. Let's see, okay. I just wanted to show how thick it is, and it is very, it was very uh, difficult to, to manage or to even apply the way we did in 2015. So we had to use a bucket yeah, to get it, then apply, then mix, and apply it by hand. Okay, 
So in 2016, we had, like I said, uh, we had a very strong response to phosphorus uh, rates. And uh, where the distillers rate significantly higher, we had very low yields due to drought, uh, 28, 29 bushels. Our typical average yields are around 45, uh, 50 bushels. So the protein response, the same where the distillers rate produced significantly higher protein than the CDS and triple superphosphate. So looking at uh, the economics, we have not done enough to determine what if this would be economical. The one thing that we know is that within a 20 miles radius, within a 20 miles radius, uh, farmers can make profit with the use of this product if they were to pay an applicator or somebody to apply. And depending on uh, various all these factors. So there are some producers who are already buying this, who like the concept, and who are applying compost to their fields. And they are actually, there's one producer who came to my office and said, I would like to apply this because it's going to increase my fungal population. That is what he said. I have bacterial population. I want to increase my fungal activity so that they are balanced. So, they are interested in that because of, uh, of that concept. So what we learned was that the silage grains can be valuable sources of phosphorus. Uh, the CDS and the BG produce significantly higher yields than the triple for phosphate, depending on the year. Uh, we are still conducting uh, research on this. Potential challenges, application, and distance from the plant. Uh, the producer I referred to actually is going to apply the wet distillate grain to his manure, to his compost, we mix, and then apply. And one thing is the concept of nutrient cycling is what has been appealing to many of the farmers or many of the people around the community. We hear that we are doing such a study. So I would like to acknowledge the following the corn, the North Dakota Corn Council, the Tarasin Ethanol that uh, supply us with the distillate grain, as well as the North Dakota Agricultural Products Utilization Committee. With that, I'd like to take your questions. We've got yes. time for a couple questions. Um, unless, I, unless I understood your slide, it appeared that you had just about as much nitrogen in this product as you did phosphorus. So I, I was wondering, why did you the um, phosphorus aspect instead of the nitrogen acid. Okay, thanks for that question. Why is it that we apply this as a phosphorus source rather than as a nitrogen source? My colleague, Paolo Flores, was the initiator of this project. He wanted to use it, do it as a nitrogen source. So I said, I would like to look at it as from the phosphorus perspective. Given that this is going to be applied just like we apply manure or compost, it would be well concerned with the amount of phosphorus we will be applying to our soil if we applied it as a nitrogen source. So we know that with the phosphorus, if we are applying it as phosphorus, we can only supplement. Uh, the amount of phosphorus that we applied at 80 pounds did not require us to add nitrogen. In fact, at the phosphorus uh, 40 pounds rate, Given our soil type, we added one additional nutrient um, treatment, I'm sorry, which I didn't talk about, which was to add an additional 40 pounds of nitrogen to come up to the level of the 80 pounds P205. Meaning that we compared the phosphorus, uh, the nitrogen, at, eight, at uh, 80 pounds nitrogen applied with urea at the 40 pounds P205 rate and the 40 pounds P205 rate without nitrogen added, urea added, there were no significant differences between the two. So was this had relatively low soil test phosphorus on these soils? Yeah, we had nine ppm, that's 18 pounds at Carrington, and uh, the other side we had uh, in uh, Ferma, we had about seven ppm. Okay, we're going to have to stop there, but I think Jasper is going to stick around for the rest of the afternoon. Yes, I'll be around. Okay, great. Okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Jasper.